Let's welcome in our co-host on the day, Bill. And it's the Bill and Maria tandem that we usually have on a Wednesday. Bill Stubblefield, the retired admiral. Good morning, it, sir. Good morning. It's a great day. Great day to be alive. Great day to be here, Rob. Former president Maria. of the Berkeley County Commission. Bill, you've got a quite a resume. Quite a resume. But it, the the main part of resume is good friend Maria Lawrence. <laughs> That's you, enough. You that seem very intent on introducing Maria for us this morning, so let's go ahead and do that. Well, Maria, if I good don't, morning. she'll fuss. <laughs> I will not. Come now, Bill. You know me better than that. She'll fuss. <laughs> well, I did make sure she had her high chair this I, morning in place. I like my high chair. You Indeed. Can, you can look out over your dominion. <laughs> uh, Stop. Assess the and, realm. It's yeah, almost what? time to, to bring out the Queen Bee shirt again. Yeah. I was thinking about doing it this morning, yeah. but um, d- I'd have to dig around in a drawer, so did not. So maybe, ne- no, not next week. Week after. How did uh, Senator Capito's appearance go? Uh, that w- it went very well. We had a really nice crowd. Um, I think she was very engaged with our staff, our volunteers. Um, it was just um, lovely. She told about her own experiences with her parents with um with hospice and um she's just been a really good advocate for us so it was great it was monday if i remember correctly yeah, it was monday monday at 11 o'clock which you know you just never know who is going to be available then but i don't know bill would we have 60 70 people i, I maybe? would think so something yeah. like that yeah, yeah so and, and all accomplished politicians uh i think share this but uh congress uh, senator capito is especially adept when you talk to her you get the sense she, she, you have her undivided attention. She's her eyes not looking other places, trying to get the crowd. She's intently focused on you and what you're saying. I'm sorry, Bill. What were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I was busy doing something. That, that happens. Hey, let's welcome in our first guest of the day, Fred Albert, president of the American Federation of Teachers, West Virginia chapter. Fred, good morning, sir. Did we? Lose, did Fred not pay attention? <laughs> Fred was not paying attention. He left. Fred, do we still have Fred? No? No, Fred. Well, what? we'll just have to chat among ourselves then. Yeah, uh, Colin had him rung up there, I guess. We, did, we must have lost a call. Uh, Fred, call back. <laughs> right? So, uh, back to Senator Capito. Mm-hmm. How long did she end up staying? Um, she was there. Um, she got there about 1030, and she stayed through the lunch hour. Um, and she said she, because I said to her, you know, we want to be sensitive for your time issues and she said no i'm heading back to dc (laughs) and um people commented to her that you know she looked very good Mm. she was relaxed and she said well i've been away from dc for a couple a couple weeks so that's been good um but uh and then i saw a post on her social media that she and some of her colleagues were wearing the eclipse glasses and went out and did that later in the afternoon but she Probably stayed until twelve thirty one o'clock. I was going to so. say at least two hours. Yeah, so. yeah. Did you get a chance to see the? We have Fred back, by the way. Did you get a chance to see the eclipse? I did. I did. Courtesy of Jim Klein. Um, shout out to him because he had an extra pair of glasses. Jim would have an extra pair. of glasses. He would indeed. So we shared it. Um, I was actually in Shepherdstown for a meeting, and we went outside at three fifteen, and um, and all of us took a chance at, or took a turn at at looking jim fun. jim has an extra pair of those glasses because he wears those glasses <laughs> every does. day he does just for not fun stop just for fun stop stop uh, fred albert is with us via telephone now fred good morning sir good morning rob and good morning bill and maria i don't believe i've ever had the opportunity to speak with you but good morning good morning well yeah you and i've spoken before i don't know about with maria but yeah, yeah we've been before. i think he met maria <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> pick on, pick I, on I, Bill Day. <laughs> I was with, I was with some very nice people from your part of the woods, uh, your part of the state yesterday, and they have nothing but wonderful things to say about all of you. So, oh my. I feel honored to be to be on your show today. Well, my mom's dead, so is my dad. So it <laughs> wasn't them. I, I don't know who, I, who else it would have been that said nice things about me. Now, Bill, people say a lot. Well, of well my, my dogs don't talk, so I'm out of luck as well. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sure about me either. So <laughs> you sure you know. it was us, Fred? Yeah, yeah, yeah it might have been somebody else, Fred. <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah. but they they seem to they seem to like your show, and they. They had nice things to say, so we'll leave it there. Well, that's cool. We'll we'll take it, Fred, and we'll we'll love that and run with it all morning long, sir. I asked uh, <laughs> Dale uh, earlier in an interview this week how the merger between the two, the WBEA and the AFT, is going. Fred, how are those steps progressing? 
Well, you know, we, as we said in the beginning, we have a lot of things to take care of business-wise, uh, legally, all of the all of the issues that a merger brings about. But I think they're going well. Uh, I'm encouraged by our members who uh, feel that this is the right direction. And, um, you know, we have we have many steps to take. I'm sure Dale said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're, we're making progress and, and we're looking forward to the day when there's a new organization in West Virginia. Fred, when I asked you previously when this merger was announced, you had mentioned that you did not have plans on being the person who would ultimately be in charge. Do you still feel that way? Well, you know, I want to do what I can. Um, I'm I'm at that age where I want to I want to sit back a little bit and enjoy the beach and and some of the things that I love to do that I haven't been able to do for a while. I'm not going to go away for good, but I'll I'll do whatever I can. I think that the new organization will definitely have new leadership, and Dale and I both will help bring that about. So you know, I'm I'm going to I'm not going away. But I, I will not be the president, and I, we'll just have to see what happens at that point. When the two merge, Fred, ultimately, approximately, how many members will there be? Well, that that's, remains to be seen. You know, we, we know what our membership is right now. We don't disclose that uh, publicly, but we, we hope that we have about 24,000 uh, educators, 25,000, somewhere around there in West Virginia. Uh, we have about 30-some thousand service personnel, and our the new organization will be open to both uh, educators. And when I say educators, I do include our service personnel. So we have the possibility for many thousands of, of new members. And we're, we feel that the new organization may attract uh, those employees who don't currently belong to either uh, AFT or WVEA. Fred, do the the service personnel not have their own union in place right now? They do. They do. But the service personnel have an option. They can belong to WVSSTA or they can belong to WVEA or to AFT. I was not aware of that. We have many members in AFT. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I was not aware of that. I thought that was uh, strictly teachers for the WVEA and the AFT. And I, uh, Yeah, and I believe that Jackie Long, and she'll comment here shortly probably, um, that she was very involved in the service personnel organization when she was... She absolutely was. Okay. Um, uh, Jackie was the state president That's of right. the WVSSPA. Okay. And, and back in 2008, um, I believe was the year... WVSSPA and AFT affiliated, and we worked very closely together. And then there was a disaffiliation uh, for whatever reason, but we still ha- maintain uh, service personnel as members. They're a very valuable part of our membership. We have um, a president of the Monongalia Service Personnel, which is a chartered local within our uh, union, and she serves on our executive board. So, um, and since you mentioned Jackie Long, uh, I just want to give a shout out to her. She's doing a wonderful job as a board member there, and that's not an easy job at all, but good morning to Jackie Long. She's there. She was the first person to sign in and type in good morning in our uh, chat uh, room there this morning, so she's listening. She's a wonderful, I I appreciate all of her dedication. Fred, I want to ask you, in in regards to the most recently concluded legislative session, I know a discipline bill of some sort was wanted by many but never made it across the finish line, the one specifically sponsored by Senator Amy Grady, who herself is a fourth-grade school teacher. Did you like the Grady bill, uh, Fred? And and, and, in one way or the other, your thoughts on not getting a discipline bill through? I'm, I'm going to be real honest with you, as I always try to be. There were parts of the bill that I do like, and we need to do something because our teachers and our service personnel are asking for help, and they've been asking for quite some time. Um, We need help with the discipline issues. And it wasn't a perfect bill. No bill is perfect, I guess, but uh, it was a start. And there were things in it I didn't care for. But, you know, here's the issue. We have students coming to our schools 
who are acting out for whatever reason, and I'm talking about acting out in a pretty violent manner, something has got to be done because we're losing teachers over this situation. We're losing service personnel because of this situation. We also have those students who, for, for whatever reason, maybe they spent the night before school in a car. Uh, we have students who are homeless coming to our schools. We have students who have witnessed trauma in their homes or in their living situations, and they're coming to schools and they're acting out. We've got to help those students. So I'm telling you that because I'm not sure that the bill uh, that didn't pass was addressing some of those issues and, and providing resources, which we desperately need in our schools to help that student expelling them or suspending them is not always the answer because where are we suspending them? You know, are we, are we sending them to a, an unhealthy situation at home? Are we sending them to the streets? So suspension is not always the answer. We need to help them. We need to get to the root of the problem and, and find help for them. And I'm not sure that that bill that didn't make it, but I'm sure we'll come back uh, in some form, I, I'm not sure that bill provided all the resources that we need. In fact, if I remember, it provided no resources. It gave you a mandate, but no that, resources. Yeah. That, and that's that's unfortunately many yeah. times a, a case. You know, a bill will be passed. It will be mandated that you have to do this in public schools, but the resources are not available. Yeah. And teachers are, you know, schools are used to doing the best you can with what you have. But this is a serious issue. I, I, I was fortunate enough to attend um, a meeting yesterday. Well, I attended first. I started my day with the State Board of Education meeting. And Mr. Jim Brown, the executive director of the um, board um, association, school board association, spoke. And he doesn't normally speak at the board meetings, but as a delegate, he spoke. And he spoke about this very issue. And the fact that, that we've got to do something. And then I followed up that meeting by going to the Milken Educators Forum and the Grow Your Own event at the Culture Center. And I met with many young aspiring educators. These are students who are in the Grow Your Own program. They're being encouraged to go into this profession. And I'm telling you, we have a bright future if we can if we can get these young people to go into this profession because they're smart, um, they know what they're doing, they can talk, they can hold conversations, and I was you know in a group like that you all you always meet a, a couple that just stand out to you. And I met this young man from Jackson County. Uh, he's a senior. His first name is Austin. And this was a quote that he gave. They, they were on a panel, um, and they talked about why they're wanting to become educators. And he said this, and, and I went to him afterwards and asked him if I could use his quote. And this is what he said. Teachers are not powered by their paycheck, but they are diminished by it. Now, let that sink in for a little bit. I, you know, I've, I've thought about that over and over and over since yesterday. And it's the same with our service personnel. They're not powered by their paycheck, but many times they are diminished by it. And couple that with the fact that we have employees going to school getting hurt because we have a disciplinary issue that's not being taken care of. That's a serious issue. Uh, Fred, we've we've talked before about the competition with the uh, with our neighboring states. Uh, yes, Washington County, uh, Maryland, is instituting a uh, a new policy. The starting salary of every teacher in Maryland is sixty thousand dollars. If you're a national board certified teacher, you have an additional ten to seventeen thousand dollars a year. That's the neighboring states. How can we compete with that, with the salaries that we're paying our teachers? Well, I would say we need to get serious, and we need to, to look for ways to compete with 
those surrounding states because the issue of having teachers in classrooms teaching outside of their certified field, uh, which has grown since 2015, you all have heard me um, say this number before, in 2015 we had 600, now we have 1,705 educators teaching outside of their field of certification. They're in the classroom as a long-term sub, perhaps, but they're not teaching in their certified field. Um, it's only going to grow unless we, we really address this issue. And, and you know, we're, we're, we are proud of the fact that we're bringing businesses into this state. We're giving tax uh, credits. We're doing whatever we can to attract other businesses to come into this state. Let's take care of our own. Let's find a way. And, and we hear all the time about the surplus of money that we continue to, to have in our revenue here in West Virginia. I think if there's ever a time to step up and say we need to make our salaries competitive, now is that time. And I'm talking about for educators, teachers, and service personnel because – we're, we're experiencing the same thing with our school bus drivers, our cooks, our custodians, our um, classroom aides. We're not paying them enough, and we're not keeping them. Maria? So, Fred, you know, one of the things we talk about here a lot, and, and you have probably been privy to um, some of these conversations, is, of course, locality pay um, for places, just what Bill was saying, for places that border other places. Now, we understand that... You know, that Morgantown people can hop over and go into Pennsylvania. And, you know, so we have a lot of border counties. Um, right. The the union's position has typically been, let's raise the salaries for everyone, correct? As opposed to um, looking at a locality piece for certain regions of the state. That, that has been our position. But, you know, locally, local school districts can do another supplement and that happened many years ago in boone county we had educators living in canola county but they would travel to close by boone county because boone county paid their educators more than canola county did and that was because of the coal severance tax uh, so local uh, school districts can supplement the state base salary and and pay more now, but still, that does not address the full problem. Let me go back very quickly to the merger, uh, Fred. I have been told, sure. I think by you and maybe Dale, uh, that there is a has been a tendency on the part of the legislators to play one to play one union against the other, uh, and obviously a merger would would correct that. Have you noticed that being played against the uh, 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 Dale Lee and his his colleagues? I, I do agree with that, and there's there's a lot of history there. But yes, I would have to agree with what Dale has said there, um, and and that's you know one of the things that we've talked about with other states. We've had conversations with other states who have merged, like Minnesota, um, they have and NEA there, uh, but for now 25 years they've been a merged state, and it does make their voice stronger because they're not they're not disagreeing or um, I, I don't want to say fighting, but they, I guess fighting with one another to get a to get a bill passed or to get noticed or to get uh, recognition from legislators. Now they're working together, uh, so they're putting their energy as a a unified uh, group, and it it does seem to be much better. Fred, I apologize if I if I missed this somewhere. What's the time frame um, that the merger will be complete? We. Okay, thank you for asking that, Maria. We are looking at September of 2025. Fred, what is so a little more, a little more than a year from now? And, and the reason is both of us, uh, AFP nationally and NEA, they have guidelines that we are working with. Um, you know, to go before I have to go before my executive council on the national level and ask for certain things. Dale goes before his executive committee. Uh, they're just guidelines that have been developed over the years for states that are merging and that's about as soon as we can and put a new organization together
Fred, what does it look like in regards to the colleges and uh, teacher degrees that are being sought and graduates that are coming out in this upcoming year? Any idea? Uh, that That's a very good question because yesterday at this meeting that I attended, Dr. Jeff Hunter, who heads up the uh, education educator preparation program, uh, and he works for the West Virginia Department of Education, and he's in charge of uh, the Grow Your Own program now. Uh, he gave a he had a chart, and I want to say it's down to about 575. Uh, I wish I had that chart in front of me, but I'm I'm trying to recall what I saw on the screen. It's trending down, and that's why we're doing things like the Grow Your Own program um, because we're trying to encourage young people to go into this profession. And that's one of the things on that panel discussion yesterday when I was talking about the young man who talked about, you know, the teacher pay doesn't power the teacher, but it many times diminishes them. That was one of the reasons. It's, it's not just about pay, but many of those students said they had been discouraged by other people from going into this profession, not because of pay, but because of lack of respect. Um, because of discipline issues. So, you know, we've we've got a lot of work to do to make this profession more attractive to our young people. And I still stand firm on the fact that this profession is noble and it makes all other professions possible. Because I, I think almost without exception, most of the young people – their lives had been touched, and I'm talking about the young people on that panel yesterday. Their lives had been touched by an educator in many ways and had caused them to decide, yes, I think I do want to be a teacher. So it's, it's, we're not graduating enough, and we need to do something about that. Fred, we're just about out of time. Final word is yours if you have anything else you wanted to relate. Well, I just I, I appreciate this opportunity always. It's it's a pleasure to be able to talk with you all, and I do say thank you, big thank you to our service personnel who you know turn on the lights, bring the kids to school, get them home safely. Uh, these are these are trying times for all of us. But last week when we had tornadoes, and now they're saying we had seven tornadoes touch down here in this area where I live. Um, our educators were heroes and sheroes because they took care of our children and made sure that they were kept safe. And, and I just appreciate everything that our public teachers and service personnel do every single day to make a difference. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate the thought. Thank you. Have, Have a great, great day, day, sir. Mm -hmm. Bye. Fred Albert, president of the AFT West Virginia chapter.